that God, the creator of heavens and earth, we want to thank thee tonight for the blessings that we have received from thee, how thou hast given unto us the riches of thy kingdom. And we are unworthy of any of the blessings that thou hast given us, but we humbly bow to thank thee for them. And we pray tonight that thou will continue to pour out of thy blessings upon us. And come to us tonight in the Word, and make the Word to live again in our hearts and in our being. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses, and help us tonight to win souls to thy kingdom. For we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You be seated. <clears throat> it is always good to come to the house of the Lord, especially here with this wonderful spirit moving among us. And now last evening I kept you just a little long. And tonight, I'm going to try to hurry up. We have quite a few nights in, ahead of us. Tomorrow night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday night, we're to be here. Monday's an off day. I'm going to Mexico Monday. Be back Tuesday in time for the service Tuesday, all through till next Sunday. And we go from there to, over to the Spanish people in the San Fernando Valley up to Oakland at the Civic Auditorium, back into Kansas, over into Canada, back down to Indianapolis, over to Chicago, on, booked for just about a year now ahead. So be in prayer for us. And now as we minister tonight, we wish to read a portion of God's Word, found in the 12th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, the 42nd verse. Listen close now to the reading of the Word. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. These next few nights we have given to praying for the sick. And we are trusting that God will continue to move and to heal those that are sick and afflicted. And now, before we can ever approach any subject, it must come from God's eternal Word. Now, healing is an act of faith. And faith can't, cannot rest itself upon the shifting sands of man's theology, but it can only rest upon the unmovable rock of God's eternal Word. Therefore, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the Word of God. And divine healing is not something that's just a, oh, a totem pole or a hocus pocus. It's a divine truth written in the Word of God, confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And it's not limited to any denomination, people, creed, color. It's to whosoever will, just as salvation is. It is a, a product of a finished work that we receive by faith in the great vicarious suffering and triumph resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So much is said today about healing and the different ways that it is approached. And there seems to be so much confusion. 
about healing. As I tried last night with all my heart to make it clear that there is no other healing but divine healing. God alone stands in healing. Now, we certainly admire all that science has given us. But science is not a healing. Science is an assistance to the body. God does the healing. Science can set your arm. Science can move a tooth. Science can take out a appendix or a tumor. But never can science produce a recreation. Creation is God alone. And God has healed every person that was ever healed, no matter what hospital or a doctor office what clinic he went to, God did the healing. God does not share His glory with no one. He said He wouldn't. And He said, I'm the Lord that heals all thy diseases. So we realize that many things has been done by hospital work and by what the Lord has sent our doctors and science to do. And to that we are thankful and grateful. Now we find many of them, doctors and science, scientists, who does not believe in God. And we find ministers the same way. Just about, I believe, more unbelieving ministers in divine healing I have seen than I have doctors. Now, that is true with the worldwide travel. It's too bad. But we have them. Now we notice when we're approaching on the medical side. Now, the medical doctor says that the... Now, it's not in every case, no time. But many times the medical doctor will say, the surgeon's wrong. They don't need an operation. The surgeon will say, you don't need them sugar pills. You need an operation. The, both of them will say that the chiropractor's crazy. And the chiropractor will say the osteopathic. And one will with another, and many times they don't want the preacher to pray for the sick. But I have come to this conclusion that when you see attitudes like that, the motive behind it is wrong. We have to admit that there's been many lives saved and helped by operations, many helped by medicine, many helped by chiropractic, many helped by osteopathy, and many healed by prayer. So if the right kind of a motive was behind it, We'd put our arms together and march forward to try to help our suffering friends, humanity. The minister, the doctor, the chiropractor, the osteopathic, all together. But when you see man who runs someone else down, when the man is proving he's doing a good work, then there's a selfish motive behind it. It's either for money or fame or for something. God wants us to work everyone hand in hand to try to make life's journey a little more pleasant as we're journeying through. But oh, it seems to be in this day and time that there is so many things that's looked upon like that in the wrong light. And not only in this day, but in other days. We find it the same way. In Matthew, the 10th chapter, we read in the Bible where God sent out His 12 apostles and He gave them power to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, 
to cast out devils, and to do it freely, just as free as you receive it, freely give it. Now, we find these disciples some time later. By the way, a man said to me some time ago, he said, Brother Branham, you are right halfway. Said God gave that power to the disciples only. I said, I can show you in the Bible where God gave the power to the church. Now you give me the verse and scripture of the Bible where God taken the power back from the church. God never gives anything and takes it back. He couldn't do it and be God. When God gives anything, it's forever and for eternity. It's God who's infant and knows everything perfect. We find these twelve apostles about ten days after God gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out devils, to raise the dead. Oh, if we would only look, we find those men totally defeated on an epileptic case. Jesus came down from the mount and he finds them out there with a boy with epilepsy. And they could not cast the Spirit out. Oh, they maybe were shouting and praising the Lord and, and kicking and anointing with oil or whatever more, but they could not cast Him out. And when Jesus came to the scene, the father of the child run up to Jesus and said, Lord, I brought my boy to your disciples and they could not cure him. And if thou canst help us. Then when this boy was brought into the presence of the Lord Jesus, he had the hardest fit he probably ever had and stretched out like he was dead insomuch that many said he was dead. But Jesus said, take him up. It's gone from him. And the boy was healed. Now watch. Then the disciples came to Jesus alone privately and said, why could we not cast him out? Ten days ago you gave us power. Have you taken it back again? Jesus never told them He had taken His power back. Neither did He tell them that they didn't have the power to do it. He said, it was because of your unbelief. Not lack of power, lack of faith to use what power you got. And that's what's the matter tonight with the church and the people. It's not a lack of power. Why, you born-again children of God has the power to move mountains. You've got the power, but you lack faith and to operate what power God has given you. Notice, and now how petty people can be. These disciples just like other men. Two or three days later, they found a man casting out devils. And he was getting the job done. He was doing a real job. And the disciples found him, and just like men of our day, they said, you come and join our denomination. You come hook up with us because you can't do this unless you go with us. But they were just a little bit too late. God was already proven He was doing it. He heard Jesus say, Whosoever will, let Him come. They were jealous because that this man 
was getting the job done and they could not do it. And that's the way it is today who starts a jealousy is man in great prestige sometimes who because of different denominational barriers or social prestige is afraid to come out and tell their church that the Holy Spirit lives today to make intercessions and will heal our sickness today just the same as it did then. And it's petty jealousy because it's not in their denominations, not in their social ranks. But God can deal in any rank that He wants to deal in. That's His own sovereign will. Oh, how little that we can be sometimes on those things. And it does nothing but stand in the way of the real believer. Now we know that God always has had a way to help His people. In the reading of our lesson tonight, which just for a few moments, let's look at it. St. Matthew, the 12th and 42. We find Jesus had just been discussing because a spirit of deaf and dumb had went out of a person. He had been able with His great power to discern the thoughts of the people. And the Pharisees had had been attacking him. They could not figure out this great phenomenon of how this man, a poor Galilean, how he could stand under supernatural power and look into a man's face and tell him who he was, where he come from and where he was going to speak that a certain thing would take place and it would happen exactly the way he said it did. They were trying to figure it out. And so is the world today trying to figure it out. What makes this great transformation that changes man? And I wish to say this, it will never be figured out. I do not understand it, and you do not understand it, and no one else can understand it. It's in the realm of God alone. God has not asked us to understand it. He asked us to believe it. And if we understood it, it would not be an act of faith any longer. It would become a knowledge. And we are not saved, neither are we healed by knowledge. We are saved and healed by faith. And that alone. Jesus had just disgusted with them. And they could not understand this great thing that He was doing. So because that they could not understand it, they just branded it the devil. They could not accept it because of their social standings. For all that was to accept it was to be excommunicated from the church and to be called a heretic. And they could not accept it. So if they could not accept it, there was only one thing they could do was brand it the devil. And Jesus said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, who does your children cast them out by? And another place he said, if I by the finger of God, Cast out devils. Oh, I want you to look at a beautiful thing here. 
When Jesus goes to cast out a devil, it's so little to him till he just takes his finger to cast it away. That's all he has to use. Oh, blessed be his holy name. He only uses a finger for the most powerful devil that could rise out of the burning hells. One little finger he casts it away. That's all he does. But when he's got a lost sheep gone astray, and when he goes to bring it back, he takes it and lays it over his shoulder. The strongest part of a man is in his back and shoulders. And he takes his most strongest part, not his finger, but a lost sheep, throws it over his shoulders and gently bears it back to the fold. When a devil's only used by a finger, he was discussing with them. They had attacked him. And the world has always attacked the gifts of God. And Jesus was God's greatest gift. Jesus was God's love gift to the church. And the church is God's love gift to Jesus. God so loved the world that He gave. All the Father has given me will come. See, it's a love affair. And always, in all ages, God has worked through His gifts. Gifts of the Spirit. God in sundry times and divers manners spake to the fathers through the prophets. But in this last day, through His Son, Christ Jesus. Now, Notice him. God works in his gifts. And when God sends his gifts, those gifts always stand steadfast. They're always attacked by the devil. But they hold their color because they're from God. All the attacks that Satan could put up on them will never move one. Oh, I'm so happy to know that. I'm so happy to know that I've lived long enough to see that brought to showdown time after time. God's gifts will always hold perfect. Sometimes not in the eyes of the world. But in the eyes of his children, it wasn't sent for the world, it was sent for the children. A woman touched his garment and got virtue enough from him to heal her. A Roman soldier put a rag over his face and hit him on the head and said, Now, you vision seer, tell us who hit you. We'll believe you. They felt no virtue. The mocking clergyman said, If thou be the Christ, just pull your hands loose and come down off the cross. We'll believe you. The devil said, perform a miracle here before me. I'll bring somebody here. Let me see you do something before me. And I'll believe you the Son of God. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He never met the devil in the challenges that the devil challenged him. But he triumphed over the devil in the in the working of God in him. He spoiled and took every legal right that Satan had at Calvary. Satan is only a bluff. Now God through the ages working through his gifts. We were reading tonight where he was talking to that generation. And he said the queen of the south come from the utmost parts of the then known world to see a gift of God that was given to Solomon by God. 
said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, a greater than Solomon is here. And watch, could you imagine in that great golden age, when God was moving in His church, and it was growing, and He set a gift, and the gift come from God. And quickly it began to be known. People would pass through the land and would see this great gift of God in operation. See how perfect it was? How that Solomon in his discernment was just as perfect as he could be. Not Solomon, but God's gift in Solomon. But it was a gift of God. And as they begin to notice it, there's something about the working of the Holy Spirit that always stirs up a mood. It brings the emotional part of the people out. Last evening when I've seen those people coming from the balconies and around, weeping, standing around the altar, accepting Christ as their Savior, I tell you, there's something emotional. When the Holy Spirit sweeps over an audience of people and see their faces light up with some kind of a radiance that this world can never produce nothing like it. To see a little housewoman with a little checkered dress on so bashful she couldn't meet the insurance man at the door, stand and sing the praises of God. It's emotional. God moves in that. And it stirs up an entrance. After a while, somebody tells somebody else, Oh, you should come to see. Oh, I love it. You should come to see what's going on. No doubt, as God's gifts has always caused an enthusiasm, people passing by and seeing the great gift of God in Solomon working, they would spread it from one to another and way down hundreds of miles below Palestine a pagan queen, the queen of, of the south. So everyone coming through Palestine would pass by her and say, Oh, you should see what's going on. Wouldn't it be nice tonight if people were that enthused about God's doings tonight? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the Word. And people would come to and tell her, the pastors, Oh, Queen, you should go up to Palestine. I'm telling you, it's marvelous. Their God has given them a gift, and it works in a man called Solomon. It's perfect. Well, as I said, faith cometh by hearing. When you begin to hear these things coming from different resources, it causes the faith to rise up. So the queen of Sheba began to get a faith. And after a while, she decided she'd go see for herself. Now, that's a good thing to do. Don't sit on the sideline and criticize. Come and see for yourself. Now, do you realize what a price this was for this little woman to pay? She had at least three months' journey on the back of a camel. And no wonder Jesus said that queen will raise up in the judgment and shall condemn this generation. 
far greater gift than Solomon was is standing with you. And you're turning it down and saying it's Beelzebub. You say, I'm a fortune teller and I'm a devil. And one greater than Solomon and that little pagan queen will rise in the day of judgment and will condemn this entire generation. I wonder what would be said tonight after Jesus has died and rose again and sent down the Holy Ghost with greater and more powerful things and more of them than was ever done on the earth before. What will happen then? To an educated, smart, intelligent people as we're supposed to be. And this little woman, she must look one thing in the face. First, she was a woman. And a wealthy woman. And with 300 miles now, not in an air-conditioned Cadillac, but on the back of a camel. But in her little heart, she was determined to find out whether it was the truth or not. Oh, I love that. She wanted to know for herself. So if you become that determined, you won't let anything else stand in your way. No matter what it is, you'll be determined to find out. You'll never look to the circumstance. You'll follow your leading. And as this little lady with the little caravan of camels and a few guards, remember the children of Ishmael was in the desert some days. Robbers. And she was loaded down with gifts. She said, if the thing is true, I'll put everything I've got to its use. Oh, I love that. If we can find out tonight that the Bible is true and Christ is raised from the dead, we ought to put everything we've got to the service of God. Every talent, every hour, everything that we've got and not let nothing stand in our way but press until we really are convinced. Now, she could have been robbed. The children of Ishmael could have come down. She had frankincense and gold and myrrh, silver. The camels were laden. What a pocket. What a setup for those bandits of the desert. And a helpless little woman. But you know what? No matter what the opposition looks like, if you are determined to find out truth, God will lead you and protect you to that thing. She was determined. She had heard. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing of the Word. She was pressing her way on. And Satan would say, Now you're going to get held up. You're going to do this. This is going to happen. That's the same devil that talks today. Same devil. But she was determined. And remember, she was a woman out on that desert for three months. She come three months journey to a desert on a camel to test and to see for herself if it really was a God of heaven who could send gifts. And we sometimes sit back in our little religious tap and shell and wouldn't walk across the street to find out whether it was right or not. Then what will this generation come to in the day of judgment? When Jesus had just said, 
speak against me, the Son of Man, call me a devil or a Beelzebub, and it will be forgiven you. But when the Holy Ghost has come, speak against that will never be forgiven you. Then what kind of people should we be? Now, we must be very reverent. And as we notice, the little lady pressed her way on, for she was determined to find out. And God's hand protected her till she finally arrived at the place. If you're really in your heart trying to find out what's right, God will lead you to that spot. He'll protect you all along the road and bring you to that spot. And as we see her dismount from the camel out in the front of the palace, now she didn't come to stay one night. She come and pitched tents and camps and stayed until she was convinced. We can't stay but one night. Maybe one hour. Not even through one meeting. But she come to stay until she was convinced. And she held her gifts back until she found out. But notice, day after day, I could see the little queen as she walked in the audience there and seen the people come before Solomon. Watch that great gift begin to move. At the great earnestness that it was operated by. How the shrewd mind of God alone could do those things. She watched it in this case. She watched it in that case. She tested it. She watched it when different people had come. Until after a while, she went, when she got ready to go, when she was convinced, She said, all that I have heard has been right. And more than what I've ever heard is right. It's greater than I even heard that it was. And the Bible said that she'll raise up in the last days and will condemn the generation of unbelievers. She come from the utmost parts of the earth to watch a gift of God work. Now, how much history of the Bible have we since that day? How many generations has passed? How the Lord Jesus has come and gone? How the Holy Spirit has come down through Luther, Knox, Sankey, Finney, all along down through the ages. And right down here in the final wind-up of it all, when every nation is sitting at needle's point, when missiles are in the skies, tidal waves are hitting the banks, more people dying with heart trouble, especially man, than ever was known. The Bible said man's heart's failing. Fear perplexed of time, distress between the nations. And all these great signs that Jesus spoke of is here and He's poured out His Holy Spirit and set signs and wonders and gifts into the church and the outside world standing on a ring, mocking and making fun of it. What will be their final doom? religious man. But God could not pour out His judgment upon a just people and be just Himself. They have to come to that place. Right at any hour that God would permit when that final person is saved, when the completeness of the body of Jesus has been completed, Russia could send over a hundred or two hundred missiles and ten minutes' time there wouldn't be a living thing left on this continent. 
Right. They don't have to fly over by plane. They can send off a rocket in Moscow and direct it to Washington and Central Street in Phoenix, Arizona and land it there. Certainly, they don't have to move out of their backyard. And we've got some we can shoot back to them. And what will happen when these things take place? It's only the mercies of God as He's giving His last warning and call, calling a Gentile people out for His name. Brethren, we're not out here to be seen. Neither are we out here for money. We're not out here for worldly fame. We're out here to try to do everything that lays within our human strength and by the help of God to win every soul to Him as quick as possible. One day, the last person will be saved. Then this generation will answer for what it's done to God's great gifts and things that's been sent before it. Let us think of these things while we call on Him with our heads bowed. O oh, eternal God, Honey is not sweet at all when we think of the sweetness of the fellowship of our blessed Lord Jesus. How He has washed us from our sins and has presented us as a chaste virgin. And we realize that there is no righteousness in us of our own, by our own merits. But we solemnly confess that we are sinners and worthy of punishment and eternal separation from His presence. But we confess that it was by His mercy that He called us. And here we are tonight in the great scientific world like it was in the days of Noah. How that the world become genius, the lineage of Cain. How they worked this into the copper and in the metals and in the wood and great craftsmen. But out of the lineage of Seth come forth the religious line. And the message went forth just before the coming. What happens before a coming? The junctions of time. There is a message given. Angels appear. Prophets are raised up. God giving warnings. Oh, God, may the people see the handwriting on the wall. The time is at hand. And for this people who are here tonight, confessing their faith in Thee, believing that Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, that has both died, buried, and rose again for our justification and has sent back the Holy Spirit tonight to fulfill the words that He promised. The things that I do shall you also. Even more than this shall you do, for I go to the Father. A little while in the world won't see me no more, yet ye shall see me. For I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. And we see you come on the scene after the preaching of the Word. You're so lovely. But after the preaching of the Word, yet you arise among your people and show to the outside world that you are alive. There without excuse, Lord. And we pray for the gospel's sake and for the Word's sake that it might be fulfilled that You'll rise in our midst tonight after the preaching of the Word and we'll confirm the Word that You are the living Lord Jesus and we'll speak to hearts here tonight. We'll heal the sick and afflicted that will do the same things here among us that you did when you walked in a carpal body among us. 
many years ago. Grant it, Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, in the event that the Holy Spirit, through a divine gift, would come tonight and do the things that Jesus did when He was here on earth, how many would rejoice to see Him and would love to see Him and would accept Him? May the Lord bless you, is my prayer. I'd like to just make this statement. Is there a sinner or a backslider here tonight would say, Mr. Branham, if I can see the Lord Jesus perform among this people tonight the same things He did when He was here on earth, I'll be a believer and surrender my life to Him. Would you raise your hand somewhere over the building? God bless you. Someone else? All right. Anybody up in the balcony this way? Say, if the Lord Jesus will do just as He did in the days gone by, I'll believe Him. How many people in here that are born again and has the Holy Spirit? Raise your hands. Everywhere in here. Well, I guess it's about 100% all Christians. All right. We'll call a prayer line and pray. How many here has never been in one of my meetings? Let's see. One of my meetings before. There's quite a number. All right. My beloved friends and newcomers, you come, I'm sure, for what good you could get and what for your soul. Now I pray that God will feed you with manna. Now I cannot heal people. Anyone knows that. I do not claim to do that. And there's no one else can heal people outside of God. You could go and have pneumonia. You go to the doctor and he'd give you penicillin, put you under oxygen tent, put another man next to you and one will die and the other will live. See, it's not determined whether you do this or that. It's determined by God. God holds your life in His hand. When Jesus was here, He did not claim to be a healer. And if Jesus couldn't claim to be a healer, how much more me, a sinner, saved by grace, could I be a healer or any other man? He said, I do nothing. It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He shows me first what to do, and I do what He shows me to do. St. John 5, 19. Now, if He'll do that tonight, that's a confirmation that He's alive and here with us. We're going to believe Him. And now, um, there'll be some come to the platform. I don't get to too many. It weakens me so. The brethren are here to watch. And we got had many meetings, got many more in. The Lord willing. But just if Christ will do those things that He did just one time, that's enough. That settles it. Now, last evening, I believe I had prayer cards. We called from 1 to 50. And some of them got up. Some of them wasn't here. Tonight, let's call from, I believe it was I, prayer card I. I, let's call from 50 tonight. And who has prayer card I-50? Would you raise up your hand? I-50. All right. Lady, over here. I-51. It's got a little letter. It's just a little square card. It's got a letter and a number. I-50. And I-51. Who has that one? If you can, if you can't raise up, the ushers will pack you up here. I-51. Would you raise your hand? Uh, I-52. Maybe they're in the balcony. All right. Number uh, 53, 52, 53. That has to be like dumb-driven cattle. Longfellow's famous psalm of life said, Be not like dumb-driven cattle. Be a hero in the stride. God doesn't have to just keep using repetitions. He asks us not to use vain repetitions. 
But when Moses was sent down to deliver the children of Israel, he was given a sign to do, to heal his hand of leprosy, perform a miracle with a stick. And when he did that one time, every Israelite followed him right on. Isn't it strange tonight that it takes so much for us? But God's not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. Now, is it a woman that... Would you come here, lady? Now, I want to ask you all to be just as reverent. Now, of course, if you want to thank the Lord, praise the Lord for... Well, that's just fine. We want you to, too. But try to... Just in your heart. How many here doesn't have prayer cards and you want God to heal you? Let's see your hand. All right. Just about everywhere. Now remember, the Bible said that he's the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Then if you'll touch him, you can get your healing the same setting there as you can anywhere. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Now here is a lady standing before me. I suppose that we are strangers to each other, have never seen each other. But God knows us both, doesn't He? Now, here's a picture like St. John, the fourth chapter, a man and a woman. If God will reveal to me what the lady is here for, what her trouble is, or something that she knows that I know nothing about, not knowing her, I know nothing of her, will each of you believe on the Lord Jesus with all your heart? May the Lord bless you. Now, Lady, not knowing you, and our Lord Jesus talked to a woman one time at the well. And he talked to her till he found her trouble. Then he told her her trouble. And she said, that was the sign of the Messiah. Said, we know when Messiah cometh, he'll do this, but she didn't know who he was. And he said, I'm he that speaks to you. If that was the sign of the Messiah then, it's the sign of the Messiah today. When Philip went and found Nathaniel, and he come, and he told him that he, where he was and what happened to him before he come there, told him he was a believer, and where he, what he did before he come, then he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was a Jew, and you're a Gentile. And if the Samaritan... Believe because Jesus said that to her and said that was the sign of Messiah. The true Jew believed because that sign was done, thought it was the sign of the Messiah. What would you do as a Gentile if he did the same thing, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? If he'd do the same thing, you'd be the judge whether it's right or not. Would you believe it was the Lord Jesus? Would the audience believe it with all their heart as Gentiles? Now, I see my part is finished. I've preached it. I've testified of it. Now the rest of it's up to God. And then if God does His part, then it's up to you. And it's you. Now the lady knows, or has just said, that we did not know each other. This is our first time meeting in life, perhaps. You saw me before from the audience or something. You went through a prayer line before. Not in this meeting. Not in this meeting. Well, therefore, I don't know what you're here for. Thousands of people passed through the prayer line. Was it another meeting when I was in Phoenix somewhere? It was. Or see, I wouldn't know and probably wouldn't know tomorrow. If you'd say you went through tonight, I wouldn't know. But there's something. You, whatever, you do this. Whatever that you want from God, in your heart you start praying to God. To, for Him to let me know what you want. And then... May God reveal it. And if He does, then we're all here as it was under oath that we believe that it would be the Lord Jesus. Now, if the audience can still pick up my voice by the microphone. If anybody's ever seen a picture of that light, that angel, it's standing between me and the woman. 
And I see the woman is suffering with some kind of a trouble that's under her ribs, making her sick at her stomach, and a cramp in her, it's gallbladder trouble she's suffering with. And then she had an accident. And she's hurt her back. And she wants prayer for that. That's the truth, isn't it, lady? If that is, raise up your hands. So. Now do you believe? Now the lady's the judge. I've never seen her. Now the more I would talk to the woman, more he would say. But there's others here to be prayed for. And I don't... Well, just let's talk to the woman just a moment. Just keep your eyes closed and pray. Now you pray again. And let's see what he would say. I could just pray for her and let her go ahead. But I'll see if he says something else. He may not. I see a little girl coming before me. The little girl is somewhat about 12 years old. And she's suffering with a tremendous nervous, and this woman's praying for that girl. That's right, raise up your hand. <laughs> Do you believe now with all your heart? Has he raised from the dead? Could you be as, as good as the Queen of Sheba accept it? As coming from God, let us pray, lady. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless this dear woman, who I bless with all my heart in your name, for her desires to be given. Amen. God bless you, Mother. Go and don't fear. Have faith and believe. I be real reverent. If I can remember just right, sir, the lady had just passed, I drew a scene of the Gentiles, or the Samaritans. And a woman come and was told of what was wrong with her. She has had an immoral life. And when Jesus told her what was wrong with her, well, she recognized that that was the sign of the Messiah. And then, seeing that you are a Christian, you believe that Jesus was Messiah and is still Messiah and will always be Messiah. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then there was a man came to him one time. And his name was Nathaniel. Philip had found him and brought him to the meeting. And when he stood before the Lord, the Lord told him of something that he had done, something had taken place in his life before he come to that meeting. And what did this Jew say to him? said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now the woman, it was told by her, and now as you as a man, if Christ will tell me something, now I don't know, you might be here for somebody else, and you might be here for financial, domestic, I, I don't know, you may be sick, I can't tell you. You know I don't know you. But if he'll tell me what you're here to see him for, then I'll be acting as the branch to him the vine. I have no energy of my own. If I don't know you, well, that settles it. That, that lets the human part out. But if he will energize and will let me know what you're here for, then you'll have to admit that it's him. Then you'll believe. Or may he let me know something that's happened in your life. Then you know where that's the truth or not. Now, if the audience can still hear my voice, the man is very conscious that something's going on. I see the man moving from me, and he's in a hospital room or something. been operated on. 
by two times. And that was for the stomach or it was the liver. No, they don't know what it was. They don't know yet, and you're still having your symptoms. That's the truth. That is, raise up your hand. Hallelujah. The reason they can't find it, sir, the doctor can't see spirit. He can only see what he can look at with his eyes or see with, feel with his hands. But the Holy Ghost is here and knows that it's a devil. Are you willing to surrender yourself to the Spirit that's speaking to you now, the Holy Spirit? Then God, with this anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is written in the Bible by our Lord Jesus, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And I condemn the devil that's tormenting our brother, and may it leave him in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now go rejoicing, brother, and be made well for God's glory. Do you believe with all your heart you believe me to be His servant? Such a confession. Then that's easy. Yes, you believe, and you've got a right to believe. You've just recently been healed with arthritis. That was last night in the meeting. You were somewhere in the audience. That's right. Down in there. And you're here tonight standing for somebody else. Your brother. And that brother has asthmatic trouble and a heart trouble, which asthma has strained his heart. That's exactly right. Now, will you take that handkerchief that's in your hand? Send it to him. And may he be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Does thou believe? You believe, sister? All right. If you will believe with all your heart, the arthritis will leave you and won't come back. Will you accept it? All right. <clears throat> yes, you raised up your hand. Kidney trouble will leave you if you'll believe out there with all your heart. You believe it? Amen. A woman standing here and a man before me, it couldn't be the same as he is coming from there. You're not here for yourself. You're standing for someone else. I'm not reading your mind. You're aware of that. But if God will reveal to me what you're here for and who you're here for or something on that order, you will accept it? You're standing for a relative of your husband. It's a nephew. And he has spells, just falls out like. Your husband needs healing too, doesn't he? From that rupture. You believe that God would heal him? All right, then go and receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If thou canst believe, are you convinced that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead? Now be real reverent. Don't move around. The little thin lady sitting looking at me there with the little flowerly dress, she's suffering with complications. She has many things wrong. But she's trying so hard to be healed. That is right, lady. That's right. 
the complications, just everything's wrong. That's what they told me. Now, if that's right, raise up your hand. Now, sister, you go on home. It's over. As soon as the meeting's over. Your faith touched him. That thrilled a lady sitting right behind you with glasses on looking at me. Yes, you that turned looked sideways to the girl and you all looking together. That gave you a thrill, didn't it? To see that little lady healed. Do you believe God take them headaches away from you? That's what you had, wasn't it? <laughs> the little lady sitting next to you is the stomach trouble. She thinks that she could be made healed too. You should believe asthma. Do you believe it would heal you, sir? You believe that God would heal you of the asthma? If you do, raise up your hand. All right. Amen. The little lady with her hands up there from Tallahassee, Florida. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know how I know? It's a capital. There's a lot of great big oak trees around there. That's where you're from. You got cancer. But you're here to believe that God's going to make you well. Thou canst believe all things are possible. You believe? Little lady sitting right down here praying too. She's got scientist trouble. Also got a bladder trouble. She wants God to make her well. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Do you believe it, lady? With the little polka dot dress on, like. Raise your hand up for that. You believe? And you can have it. As thou hast believed, so be it unto you. Oh! He is wonderful. Jesus, God's Son. Are you believing? Sir, is this the... I suppose we're strangers to each other. Perhaps our first time in life to ever meet. God knows you and He knows me. So now, if I could help you and wouldn't do it, I'd be a brute. I wouldn't be worthy of preaching the gospel. I'm not anyhow. But it's not my worthiness that I'm standing here. I'm standing here to represent somebody who is worthy. I'm not worthy and no one else is worthy to do it. But I'm only representing Him. And He loves you. And He wants to... Do something for you. And you believe that He sent me to help you by divine... Now, He didn't give me anything to heal you with because that's already done. He could only give me something to vindicate that I was sent from Him. The audience believe that? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to see Him. Be nice to eat again, wasn't it? Them old ulcers are such an awful thing. Stomach ulcers. It's right. I don't know yet, never seen. There's someone else with the ulcers too came in by. Will you believe? Look here, sir, just a moment. This is our first time meeting. If, if you'll believe with all your heart, say, by the way, you're not from here. You, I see like blue waters is licking up along a coastline. You live in a coastal state. And you come from the west and north, coming south, coming this way, southeast, coming here. You are from California. That's right. And you're from a city called Live Oaks or something. Live Oaks. And if Jesus could tell Peter 
who he was. Do you believe he can tell me who you are? B.A. Bond. B.L. Bond. From Live Oaks, California. Amen. You believe? Come here. Oh, eternal and immortal God, be merciful, our God, unto the needy tonight and heal those who are so sick. Bless this man who I bless in thy name, and may he receive what he has asked for in Christ's name. Amen. Believe with all your heart. Go and be healed. We well, just want to show you something. Heart trouble is a bad thing and a dangerous thing, but Christ lives in the heart. You believe that? All you out there with heart trouble, raise up your hands. Got heart trouble. Look here. See, there's no way of telling you switch and switch. Stand up on your feet then. Praise be to God. If that evil thing will leave this man, the same God that would heal this man would heal you. Do you believe it? The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Sister from Lubbock, Texas, believe that now. Let us pray. O oh, eternal, immortal God, I pray Thee to be merciful unto these who are standing now. And I pray that You'll cast away the evil from them. And may the Holy Spirit just now do a work in the hearts of these people that will finish it then they may be completely healed and go from this building tonight rejoicing and shouting the praises of the Lord. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless every one of you. Go with faith believing and believe that God will do it. And the asthma will leave too, brother, just as you sat down and raised up from the chair. Everybody's got asthma. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Everyone who suffers with asthmatic, here's the time that you'll see God do a great thing. Come here, brother. Oh, eternal, everlasting God who raised up the Lord Jesus and His chair tonight. Satan, you're exposed. You are defeated. You've been defeated 2,000 years. The people just now find it out. Come out of these people, thou spirit of asthma. In Jesus' name we challenge thee by the faith of the resurrection. Amen. The Lord bless you, brother. May it never bother you again. You walked a lot different when you raised up then. If you'll believe with all your heart, you'll never have to turn sideways to get off the street no more. Or get out of the bed of the arthritis. God will have you well. Do you believe it? Go on now. So just go on your road rejoicing and thanking God. A lady's trouble. Female disorder. God can heal that as same as He can heal anything else. All the ladies that are suffering with this lady's trouble stand to your feet just now. To be healed by this prayer. Oh, here's the way to get people healed. How many were standing up a few moments ago? Feel your heel, raise your hand. You that stood up since we've been. Just look. It's the work of God. Oh, eternal and blessed Father, we bring this person into thy presence now by the way of prayer, holding them there in the name of Jesus. And we condemn the enemy that's making our sisters suffer. Leave them, Satan, and come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son. Amen. God bless you, lady. Now go. I don't think so. It's a dream. Oh, are you happy? 
Are you satisfied that God of heaven still sends gifts to the earth? God of heaven has vindicated His Word that He raised up His Son, Jesus, and He's right here now. He's present. And He can make every person in here completely well right now if you'll believe it. Would you accept it? How many would believe it? Just remain with your hands up. Now raise your head up towards heaven. In the prayer line too. Raise your hands up. Now if you have trusted me to be the servant of the Lord, and I have preached to you the Bible and it is the truth for Christ has come down and permitted me to prove to you that He is here and living and raised from the dead. Then hear me speak the solemn truth. He was wounded for your transgressions. With His stripes you were healed. You've got the power in you if you've got the faith to exercise it. Do you believe it? Satan, leave this audience. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of this people. In Christ's name, stand to your feet. Give God praise. Just raise to your feet and give Him praise. I believe every one of you is healed. Give God praise and glory. Amen.